Santelli, uh, on assignment for the Bruce Springsteen Archives and Center for American Music, and I'm here talking with Roy Bitten. And Roy, I, I thank you for, for joining us today. Um, the idea that COVID has had a powerful impact on our music community is probably an understatement. Uh, things have changed drastically, both personally and professionally, for pretty much everyone in the industry. I want to start off by asking you a question on how, generally speaking, you have been dealing with COVID. How has it impacted you, first, personally, and then second, professionally? Yeah, well, uh, thanks for having me. I'm uh, happy to uh, be able to participate. Um, you know, uh, I guess I'm, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. I, I, uh, my life uh, is not terribly di different. Um, I think the hardest thing uh, for me at this point is actually how it's affected my kids. I think that my, my children and their generation uh, has been hit uh, with two terrible economic, no, I'm calling them depressions. I don't see uh, this as being something that's going to, that we're going to recover from uh, easily or quickly. And uh, I think, you know, they graduated, one of them in particular graduated from college uh, just around 2008 when the, the supposed Great Recession happened. And, you know, it took him 10 years to sort of really get on his feet and start to achieve something. And, and now this has happened. And uh, he is in the music business. He's a video director. So it's impacted him very directly. And I mean, he obviously can't get a crew out there and, and uh, shoot a video uh, with the uh, social distancing requirements. Uh, aside from the, the just the, you know, the, the uh, danger of contracting it yourself. So um, I feel terrible for him and my younger son who's been trying to make his way in the world also is, uh, you know, the unemployment rate is just horrific. And, uh, and I also miss them. I mean, they don't want to, as much as they are quarantining, uh, you know, they don't want to come by and, and risk somehow, uh, you know, infecting myself and Susan, my wife, you know, uh, we're in the, in the supposed danger demographic, you know, heightened danger demographic. So, I would say that for me, that's, that's the hardest thing, you know, I mean, it, it's a far cry from what m most of the people in the United States and the world are, are dealing with, uh, to be suddenly finding yourself in a mile long uh, car line uh, at a food bank and waiting hours because you lost your job and it's now three weeks later and you can't get your unemployment check because you don't know wh where it's coming, when it's coming. You know, that I consider to be <clears throat> a real, a real issue and, and a, a difficulty and tragedy for people. That in addition to, you know, people who uh, have no choice but to be uh, in, a, in a place and in harm's way in close distance with other people, either because they have to, um, you know, take public transportation to work or they're in a situation where they just have to be close to people. Uh, let's disregard all the health care workers for the moment, you know, yeah. just the average guy who's trying to, you know, put food on his table. So. Um, I, I guess I have to preface this by saying, you know, as I said, I, I'm one of the lucky ones. And, and uh, while I, I do have, you know, uh, feelings and, uh, and, and uh, um, some uh, level of, of um, you know, I hate to even use the word hardship for myself uh, compared to what so many people have, uh, uh, have been experiencing uh, 
into uh, you know the from the beginning of this pandemic when everything started to get locked down. Has COVID affected you creatively? Um, you know, you're a producer. You you do songs. You're a piano player, musician. How has that impacted your life, your your creative life, your musical life? Yeah, well, um, you know, I have to say that always, always external factors affect one's uh, creative inner life, you know. And, and uh, certainly when I sit home and play, because that's really where I'm, uh, what I'm doing these days, you know, I, I, I feel it. I find that, well, first of all, it's, uh, music is always a great catharsis. So when I do sit and play, uh, yeah, there's uh, there's uh, feelings that seem to be expressed that are uh, maybe a little more a little darker, you know. Uh, I I write some at different times, you know. I go through periods where I don't write anything, and then other times I I, I feel like I have to create something, and um, I can feel it. I feel it, you know. Um, I wouldn't say that I, I've been, uh, you know, creating uh, a, a, uh, a body of work uh, like Bruce did when he recorded The Rising, you know, but certainly in the last thing or the last piece of music or two that I've recorded, they've been a bit on the dark side or a little on the, on the restless side, you know. So, uh, look, as musicians, uh, we can't help but be affected by things that are happening in the world right do you find yourself listening to you know you're, you're at home right you're quarantined you're staying at home it means a lot of time at home like 24 hours a day at home do you find yourself uh because of this listening to more music are you exploring classical music more are you listening to things that you hadn't listened to for years what, what's your listening appetite and what's your listening routine if you will right um, actually, I've been going through a period where I've sort of been not really leaning towards listening to a lot of music. Uh, I do occasionally, you know, I, I don't think my habits have changed uh, as of late. I, I tend to be all over the place when I'm in my car. Sometimes I like to listen to just, I just like to check into pop radio and see what's going on. And I do listen to some classic music classical music on occasion, um, uh, but I'm all over the place, you know, uh, but I don't see any, any real change in that. I do find though that, you know, I, I am actually very busy, even though I'm sequestered in my house 20, practically 24 hours a day. I have a lot of things going, personal things going on, um, which the pandemic has not really affected. So, uh, I find myself pretty active and pretty busy, you know. How about reading? Uh, you spend your days reading. What have you been reading lately that you might be able to share with us? Well, you know, I've been uh, pretty uh, uh, compulsively obsessed with just what's going on in the news cycle, you know, and it's uh, the political situation, socio-economic situation. And uh, I find that I do a lot of reading. Um, you know, I, I try to access various, a lot of sources, you know, not just the New York Times, which I've always been, you know, that's always my first go. Uh, but I try to look a little bit at, at some of the other sources just to see what's being presented uh, as an alternative. And, uh, so I, I'm, I guess that's my my main reading these days. <laughs> you know, there are, there's a couple other things I, I touch on that uh, uh, just for escapism, but that's nothing worth mentioning. You know, <laughs> you know obviously, um, it doesn't take a rocket science to to realize that what's happening with COVID and even with Black Lives Matter has dramatically changed, not just the music industry, but music culture in general. Um, when you look forward, you know, as a member of the E Street Band, just as a, a person in the music community for the last, well, a long time, more than 40 years. Long time. Years, 
Um, what do you see the immediate future? How, how do we get out of this? And, and how does American music in general survive and even thrive after, after COVID? Do you have any ideas on that? Well, you know, obviously the, the, first, the first thing is people have to get back out there to, you know, play, play live. I mean, people, I think people, uh, even though there's been a lot of talk lately about, well, what's going to happen with live music and concerts? And uh, I think that's going to return. It's going to return. I, I, I don't think that people are going to say, <clears throat> I'm never going to go to a live concert again. I think people are going to crave that communal experience. It's unlike anything else. And uh, it has no uh, um, language or cultural barriers. Music is, as they've always you know, said, is a universal language and a universal experience. So I think that's gonna return. I, I'm hopeful that, that it'll pick up again as soon as they can get a handle on this, uh, on this virus. Um, and as far as the overall musical landscape, I would hope that Black Lives Matter uh, translates into a few things. One, of course, I hope that everybody who's been out in the streets who didn't vote in 2016 or 2018 gets out there. Because if anybody wants to affect any change, I mean, this is obviously the only way we're really gonna do it. You know, they can protest all they want and, uh, you know, and they can come up with this as many bills as they possibly want and send it over to the Senate and they'll just never get signed. Nothing will ever change. And here we go. You know, it's just the same old, same old. So not only do people have to do that, but I also think that artists, I think it's time for artists to try and dig a little deeper than they have been. You know, I think there's been, um, uh, a, uh, there needs to be a resurgence of, of uh, the voices that speak about the problems we have and, uh, you know, and the human condition more, you know, I mean, it's something Bruce has always done from the beginning. And uh, the number of voices who have spoke, spoken out like that over the decades has declined in my opinion. And I would hope that there's a, a group of people that are not just interested in, in uh, emo and you know, writing and recording songs that, about how depressed they are. You know, not that people shouldn't express their feelings, but I, I do think that uh, a little, it, 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 I'm hoping that maybe, maybe, this would inspire a group of young people to, to write more about uh, more relevant issues. I think you're, you're absolutely right. You know, um, back in the 60s when we grew up, music was a big agent for social political change in this country. And it, it, it really helped bring about significant change, whether you're talking about the Vietnam War or Nixon or whatever it might be. Right. Um, so I, I, my last question would have been, but you, you kind of worked your way into it, is that you, you are of the assumption, as I am, is that music should and now needs to be an agent for change in this country, like it once was in the 60s. And uh, we need to all find that Woody Guthrie in all of us to make sure that that happens, both as listeners as well as creators like yourselves. Yes, I would hope so. You know, I, that's that's uh, one of my uh, um, hopes for the future here. Well, Roy, thank you so much for sharing some time with us today. Um, we all hope to, to see you back out on that stage with Bruce and the E Street Band sometime in the future. And uh, best of luck to you and, and to your kids. And uh, we'll be checking in with you sometime later on in the future. Thanks again. Fantastic. Thank you, Bob.